Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Well, good morning, Calvary. Thanks for tuning in for your word for the day today. It's great to have you here. You know, if you're a, a parent of, of teenagers or grown uh, adults, uh, you probably remember the, the stage when your kids uh, reach the point of, of saying things like, you're not the boss of me, uh, or questioning your authority in their life. Thankfully, my kids are, are fairly young. They haven't quite uh, worked up the boldness to make some of those statements yet, but I know it's coming. Uh, and really, I think that is part of the core of, of the human existence, of understanding authority, where authority lies and where it doesn't, and really understanding what a true authority figure is. And as we look at Matthew chapter 21 today, we're going to see the authority of Jesus challenged by the people who were there, the religious leaders that, that were questioning him and how he spoke and taught with the authority that he did, and kind of see how he responded and, and where he landed with that. So Matthew chapter 21, I want to read this for us together. And starting in verse 23, he says this. He says, when he entered the temple, the chief priests and elders of the people came up to him as he was teaching and said, by what authority are you doing these things and who gave you this authority? I always love that. Who gave you the right? We'll let, let that one go for now. But uh, verse 24, Jesus answered them, I also will ask you one question. And if you tell me the answer, then I will also tell you by what authority I do these things. He asked them, the baptism of John, that is John the Baptist, he says, the baptism of John, where did it come from? From heaven or from man? And they discussed it among themselves saying, oh, if we say from heaven, he'll say to us, then why did you not believe him? But if we say from man, then we're afraid of the crowd for they all hold that John was a prophet. So they answered to Jesus, we do not know. And they said to him, then neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. And so I love that Jesus answers a question with a question that he puts the, the chief priests and these elders kind of back on their heels in the corner of, of their own attempt at accusation here. And, and really the context here is John the Baptist, uh, we see as the first messenger of Jesus. He is the one out both baptizing people, but also proclaiming the kingdom of God is near, trust in Jesus. He was the first to call Jesus the, the, the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He was the most vocal and bold prophet of of Jesus. He was the one who baptized Jesus. And we got to see the, the, the triune God represented in that moment as God the Father speaks from heaven and the Holy Spirit comes down like a dove upon Jesus himself. John the Baptist was this powerful prophet of God who came with the message that Jesus is the Son of God. And so he, he uses this to say, hey, you, you can't believe two opposing things here. What do you believe about John? If you believe he was a prophet, then you believe his message, which means I have the authority as the son of God. And really where this drives us is it, is it forces us to, to ask our own question, what authority does Jesus have in our life? What authority do we see that Jesus has? Do we see him like John the Baptist and we see him as the son of God and savior of the world, the lamb of God who came to take away the sins of the world, the, the ultimate authority? Do we see him as someone that, that we, as John the Baptist says, hey, we're not worthy to untie your sandals. We're, you're so holy and wonderful that being in your presence is, is maybe too much for us. Because if that's the case, if we say that Jesus is the son of God and savior of the world, then we often also have to say that he has authority in every area of our life. Not just the areas we want him to speak into, not just the areas that encourage us and make us feel warm and fuzzy on the inside, but also the, the areas where he really steps on our toes, where he makes us uncomfortable, where he, he, he makes us say no to things that we really want as a part of our life, where he makes us step out of our comfort zone to serve and obey and represent him to the world. But if we're not in that place, if we say, no, I don't attribute the same authority as John the Baptist and these other people in scripture, then we have to answer, then who is this Jesus? Who is this Jesus where for 2000 years, people have been, have been continuing to perpetuate the message of the risen savior, Jesus Christ, who is documented in history, who is verified in historical events and has proven through scripture, his authority. Well, one person in history says that we have three options with Jesus. He's either a liar, a lunatic, or Lord. He either lied about all of this and, and everything's a sham, he, or he's crazy, and, and all of it is manufactured. But really, those two arguments don't hold up well. There's so much information. There is so much verifiable facts. There's so many prophecies that prove who he was. 
that I believe that our only tangible choice in that is to say that he is Lord. But here's the thing. I can't make that decision for you. I cannot prove from just reading text to you that that is the case. You have to come to a place as the recipient of this information, as the one looking at Jesus and his authority and say, yes, I recognize your authority in my life. I submit all of my life, all of my uh, purpose and direction over to you, and I am submitting to you as the Lord and Savior of my life. Only you can make that decision. And I hope that today that you would do that, that you would call Jesus your Savior, and if you've done that, that you would continue to give him more and more authority in your life uh, to the point where you say, Jesus, you have ultimate authority. You can speak into anything in my life and call it good or bad or something that needs to be removed or modified because he is the Lamb of God and Savior of the world. He is the Son of God who has ultimate and true authority. And our role is to live our life submitting to that authority. I hope that you can do that today. Well, have a great day.